to move to look a little bit more at the t-test, let's remind ourselves that probability is related to the likeliness that something is true. We looked at this example, the two classes with different average marks. The question was, are they really real differences or is it just caused by chance? Now looking at this with the numbers of only 30 in each class, the probability in fact is it's just caused by chance. Statistics will help us. It's almost certainly just random variation. Statistics can help us here, and the t-test specifically can help us. And again, I'm going into the literature to use a real study to show how it's been used. This study, I'm going to look at two parts of it. Boys and girls, huge samples. Now, that's the average score in a test of critical thinking. The question is, are the boys really better at critical thinking than the girls, or is it just chance? Because in this particular country, boys and girls are rigidly educated in separate schools. They do not mix at all, and therefore the way they're taught might be very different. The t-test value was 7.3. What does that mean? What does it tell us? The statistics will tell us that a value as high as that, the chance that that happened just by chance is less than 0.001. That's less than 0.1%. In other words, one in a thousand. In other words, you're 999 times out of a thousand confident that in that country, under these circumstances, boys are performing better in a test of critical thinking. In the same piece of research, different teaching. One group, the control group, the lower group, followed the standard curriculum. The second group, the higher group, the experimental group, the written material was recast and rewritten. Nothing else was changed. Teachers weren't changed. Teachers weren't trained. Nothing else was changed at all. The question is, does it help critical thinking? This is the result. The question here is, is the 40.8 average score higher than the control group of 36.2? The spread of marks is very similar. Statistics helps us. The t-test was done. The value was 8.2. The chance that this happened simply by chance is less than one in a thousand. We can be very, very confident that the redesign of the curriculum teaching materials, just the written materials, had made a genuine change. Now you can see where that information really helps us. The first experiment pointed to the fact that girls and boys were not getting the same experience. The second one showed that you could redesign written materials and you could make a difference in the results that you got from a critical thinking test. And that points to a way ahead to enrich the education and to encourage critical thinking in the schools. And all of this was published in International Journal in two issues of the journal. We're going to look at the chi-square statistic. Yet again, I'm going to take a survey that was used and has been published. A very large number. And the question was asked, what are your opinions about your chemistry lessons? Now, this 800 students aged about 17, 18, were in two groups. The traditional group had been taught the curriculum in the normal way, using the normal written materials and books that were used in that country. However, the researcher had redesigned all the books. That's the group that's called new. Redesigned them in a specific way for a specific purpose. The question is, did it make any difference to how they saw the chemistry lessons? Nothing else was changed. Here are just four questions that they were asked. They were asked to tick a box between the words boring and interesting indicating what they thought of their chemistry lessons. Here are the percentages that ticked the boxes from the two groups. The question is, does the new group, that's those who were taught with the new materials, differ from the traditional group, or is it just chance? That's where the chi-square statistic really comes into its own. When the calculations are done, that is the results. For boring interesting, the chi-squared value is 66.0. The chance of that happening by chance is less than one in a thousand. We can be confident that the new approach, the new materials, were increasing the interest enormously. Similarly, with the other three questions. Let's look at just one pair of numbers. Now, the chi-square looks at all the pairs of numbers. Look at one pair of numbers. Following the traditional materials, 29% were at the extreme end of interest. That had changed to 71% with the new materials. That suggests that the new materials were going down well. They were also finding them easier and a bit more useful and a bit more important. And in every case, this was not caused by chance. This was taken from a PhD thesis, although bits of it have been published elsewhere. This is where questionnaires can help us, where statistics of chi-squared can help us to understand the output from questionnaires, because it reveals that this new approach was bringing perceived benefits to the learners. Now, the researcher also measured their benefit in terms of performance, and that was even more staggering, because the group following the new materials, they performed 
markedly better than the traditional group. Statistics helps us to enhance and enrich the learning experiences of our students. We're going to watch chi-square. Depends whether it's a control group or not. In this case, there was. And computer programs sometimes don't make it clear which way they're calculating it. So I recommend using a set of programs designed for the purpose and contacting me by email. I can email the attachment to you. Overall, that's true of statistics. They can help us, but we have to think about probability. Was it caused by chance? Big samples do help. We need to have the right statistic, and I've suggested some ways that will help us form. Hopefully, the mysterious world of statistics has become a little less mysterious. Music